Uh, welcome to, uh, as Katie said, our fourth installment of Docs Teach for Virtual Learning. And today's session is how to analyze primary sources online with Docs Teach. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we um, have been talking about a lot of the features of Docs Teach, but the um, it's it's all reliant on the primary sources that are included. Um, in, t in the Docs Teach database from the holdings of the National Archives. And we always uh, talk about primary sources and how we love working with them because they really, uh, putting them in students' hands turns students into historians. And uh, document analysis, being able to figure out those documents is kind of the first step in giving our young historians um, the tools they need to use these primary sources as historical evidence. Um, and so I'm gonna today show you some uh, activities that we have that are uh, created specifically for going through the process of document analysis and talk about some of, of what that process is. So uh, I'm going to get started and I'm going to uh, click on menu and activities. And what I'm gonna do is just go down to um, this area where I can refine by historical era thinking skill, activity type or grade level. And I'm gonna click on activity type, analyzing documents. So we're gonna jump right in here. And you can see uh, a lot of uh, results here, a whole variety of, of documents. These are all uh, specifically for practice analyzing primary sources. Uh, you can see photographs, you can see written documents, et cetera, posters. And I'm gonna just uh, select one to use as an example to, to show you how these types of activities work. So I'm gonna click on this particular letter and here we are on this uh, teacher page. Uh, you, if you've been in our other webinars, uh, this is familiar uh, where we have say who it's created by, what era it falls into, um, where it fits on Bloom's taxonomy, the grade level. This one's recommended for high school, but could certainly be uh, used or adapted for middle school level. And if you've got um, some instructions about how to use it, and I'm gonna click on this start activity button, and this is gonna bring up the student page. So this is the student version of the activity, and they don't get all that information. They're getting what is the highly secret matter. And um, so this student page is something that if you're teaching virtually, you could share uh, like we're doing now through a Zoom meeting, a Google Meet, uh, whatever your virtual platform is, or it's also something if you wanted uh, your students to work on it asynchronously and as an assignment, you could give them the URL to this activity, or if you're using Google Classroom, click on the Google Classroom button and share it as an assignment that way. So you can use this in more than one way, but I wanna show you what this kind of activity looks like and what these steps are. Uh, so here's our, our, our letter. And we're gonna just go down and take a look before we get too into the letter, the process of document analysis. We've broken this into four steps. And these four steps are always the same, whether you're analyzing a photograph, a textual document, a poster, um, the, the individual questions under each section might vary, but the, the basic process and those four steps are the same. So first we're gonna meet the document, then we're gonna observe its parts, we're gonna try and make sense of it, and lastly, use this document as historical evidence. That's an important piece. So if we go back up to our letter here, we'll take a look at this first section, which is meet the document. And so we're just really getting the broad view. This, these are high level type of questions. So what type of document is this? So we, we know this is a letter right off the bat, but it might be another type of document. It might be a presidential document, for instance. Uh, and then we're asking students to describe it as if you're explaining it to someone who can't see it. Um, so for instance, looking at our letter, we can zoom in. Uh, we know that it's got, uh, it is a typed letter, but it also has some handwritten notations on it. It's got some date notations on it. It's got some stamps on it. So it's a, a one page letter uh, that's got notations. Then we can go to observe its parts. Who sent it and what's its title? Who read and received it? And when is it from? So if we go up to the letter, we can pick this letter apart. And again, you can discuss this with your students if you're using this um, in, in a whole class or a small group meeting online, you could ask students to use the chat feature or to raise their hand virtually to chime in uh, to, to pick this apart together. So 
Uh, we know it's addressed to the president. It doesn't say which president it is. We might need to figure that out. It's coming from uh, a name here. Your students may not be able to make this out. It says Henry L. Stimson, but it does say Secretary of War. So we know uh, that that's his role. Um, we also uh, could probably figure out who the president is because we've got a date here. Uh, we also have some other dates of you know when the president saw it and um, there's a, something about the next day down here. So we're, we're starting to pull the pieces together to kind of to uh, figure out a little more about this document. But now is our step where we're going to try and make sense of it. So uh, this has some questions that are specific to this particular letter. These analyzing documents activities um, have some general questions, which are uh, the majority of these, but some of these um, have been written specifically for this document. How many days passed between when the letter was written and when the president met with the author? What was the name of the president to whom this letter was written? Why did the author write it and what was happening when this document was created? So if we think about those questions and we, we go back up here, uh, what is the president? So again, we can probably figure that out uh, based on the date. Uh, we could also uh, figure out we've got a note down here that says, Matt, put on the list for tomorrow, Wednesday the 25th. HST. So we've got some initials there. And between all that, we can figure out that this is Harry S. Truman. And um, tomorrow, so the president saw this, and the very next day, he asked to have this put on his schedule. So that um, we're asking this question, but that's also prompting our students to think about the importance of this matter and what this might be about. Um, it says, you know, it's a very important to talk about this as soon as possible. It's a highly secret matter. We got some some um, specific language in this document that, that gives us other clues. Um, he even underlined here and has, has to do with foreign relations and such an important effect on my thinking in this field. You ought to know about it with much, without much further delay. Uh, and of course, foreign relations, foreign relations um, in April of 1945, we know that uh, World War II is going on. Um, we also, uh, could figure out, in fact, that President Truman had only been in office for, uh, I believe, 12 days when um, he received this letter. So, um, so it's something urgent. It's something highly secret coming from the Secretary of War uh, to the president. So we know all of that so far. Uh, and now we're going to use it as historical evidence. What's the significance of the word secret being stamped in red? How long was this letter classified? So again, we've got secret up here. It's crossed out. Uh, our students tend to love things that were top secret at one point. It's a real great hook uh, to get them interested. And we can go down here and see these stamps. This is one thing we love about primary sources. The stamps really tell a story about how this document has a life. It wasn't just written once and sent, but it was written. It was received. People acted upon it. And even in this case, um, in the 1970s, you've got, you know, um, a 30, more than 30 years later, you have that this document still living because someone's acting on it. It's declassified that much later. So uh, really important stuff here to be classified for so long, right? Uh, and then when you're done, students, of course, are being asked, what is the highly secret matter? And if we go back to up, our, up to our letter here, then um, we've figured out based on all these clues, of course, that the Secretary of War wants to tell the president all about the Manhattan Project and um, a, a very um, interesting document, especially considering that Truman uh, made the um, uh, very large decision to to uh, use uh, the atomic bomb and to um, that it was less than four months after receiving this letter. So um, a really uh, interesting document to to kind of dive into. And there's so many uh, great primary sources to dive into like this that don't take a lot of time to do. And again, you could use this in your full class or small group Zoom meeting, Google Meet, your you know virtual class, or you could ask students to work on this independently uh, on time and come back to class. They could even turn it into you using the methods we've covered in the other webinars and um, uh, you know fill out all these questions, turn it into you, and then you could choose a, a, a student's work to bring up um, to show the next day in class where you're going through the, the document uh, as a group in, it quit more quickly than you might do um, if you're all looking at it at the first for the first time together. Um, so I want to show you uh, some other examples of types of uh, analyzing documents activities. So I'm going to close this one and go right back to my menu and activities. And again, I'm going to just refine 
and choose my activity type as analyzing documents. And in this case, why don't we check out this photograph to just, just show you the difference between a photograph and a written document. So again, here's our teacher page and I'm gonna launch the student activity. Uh, this one is um, all about photographer Lewis Hine, a photograph that he took. Um, he worked, uh, this is providing information to the students that he worked for the National Child Labor Committee. It's this, in this case, the introduction is actually including this caption um, that went with the photo originally of this photograph from 1909. And so again, students are presented with the document and it's, I just wanna point out it's the same four steps, the same progression. So they're gonna meet the photographs, uh, observe its parts, try and make sense of it, and then use it as historical evidence. In this case, the questions are gonna be a little different. Quickly scan the photo, what things do you notice first? What type of photo is this? You know, is this, is this a candid photo or is this a fo posed photo? An interesting question here. Is there a caption? Yes, it was provided. Uh, what are the people you see, the objects, the activities? Um, in this case, if we go look at the photograph, there might be, um, so they might talk, they don't have names of people, of course, uh, but they might notice that they're children. They might also notice what is not pictured. You know, there's not adults here or there's, there's uh, just a couple of adults in the picture. Um, they have some tools, but not a lot of tools that they're working with. They um, do not have shoes, for instance. They do not have a lot of room in which to work. So um, just just uh, seeing the parts of the photo and and pulling out um, what they can to make sense of it, which is the next step. Who took the photo? Uh, the caption might help. When or where is it from? When is it from? Uh, what was happening at this time when this photograph was taken and why do you think it was taken? So again, we have some answers from the, cap cap the caption that was provided. This is from Baltimore in 1909, um, working with string beans um, in the packing company. Uh, why was this taken? So, this, so the students have picked this apart, but now they're thinking about the perspective of the photographer. So um, they're looking at primary sources, but also understanding that everything is created from a specific perspective and from a, a specific person or people that um, maybe have an interest in, in um, causing a certain reaction by whoever views what they have created. And so lastly, use it as historical evidence. Uh, what did you find out about this photo from this photo you wouldn't learn elsewhere? What other photos uh, could you use to help you uh, understand this event or topic? And then when you're done in this particular uh, activity, they're gonna learn a little bit more about Lewis Hine, thinking about um, what parts of the scenes were impactful, um, how, uh, what emotions they might convey and, and that kind of a thing. So it's an example of a photograph. Uh, we have um, the, this, this tool works for all types of primary sources, works for written documents, for photographs. Um, we've got questions for, about artifacts, posters, maps, cartoons, videos, audio, artwork, uh, et cetera. So I'm gonna show you um, another uh, example now. And in addition to all those uh, types of primary sources that these, this, this type of activity, this analyzing documents activity can cover. We, it also can apply to um, different ages and different grades of students. So again, if I refine, I went to search for activities, I'm in activity type analyzing documents, and I've got um, all of the same uh, examples of, of activities before, but maybe now I wanna refine it further by grade level. So maybe I wanna um, choose this upper elementary grade level and see some examples here. And let's take a look at how, how these questions look different for elementary students. So this one's geared to upper elementary and I'm gonna click to start the activity so we can see this student view. Um, now, this is for upper elementary students, um, but you could absolutely adapt this to younger students, even students who are just learning to read grade, first grade, second grade, um, you know, that have basic reading skills, um, as long as you are walking them through this in a class setting. Um, but uh, you'll notice the progression is the same, meet the document, observe its parts, make sense of it, and use it as historical evidence. But for the younger students, the, the language is different. It's a bit simpler. <clears throat> there are illustrations to help as well. Um, this one has some 
customized questions as we meet the document. What animal do you think is drawn at the top? Um, in case you're wondering, that is a sea otter. And um, are there markings where, you know, we've got some illustrations to help? You know, this one does have a stamp. Is it handwritten or typed? Uh, again, who wrote it? Who read or received it? What's the date? So you're looking at the parts of the document. And in this case, since this is more than one page, you can click view entire document. And here we can go see uh, this letter is from 1989. Um, this is a student who is writing about the Exxon Valdez oil spill. You can look at page two where she's talking about her class is doing a sea otter project. They're very cute. Uh, page three, um, she's asking to please clean up the oil spill. She's a second grader at Franklin School. And um, we've got some information about this document below as well, letting us know that she wrote to the Alaskan uh, regional director of the Fish and Wildlife Service about cleaning up the oil spill. If we return to the activity here, uh, we can answer those questions now that we, we just talked about in observing its parts, and then we can think about making sense of it. What happened that made this author very mad? Why do you think that made her mad? Why do you think she wrote this document? And why do you think she sent it to where she did? And we can also use it as historical evidence. Where could you find out more about this event, um, the Oya spill from 1989? And when you're done, these questions particular to this document, uh, do you think other kids have written letters like this about other events? Or what other kinds of events do you think kids might write to the government about? So this is um, for those younger elementary students, but um, the, it, you know, it, it could be a step into civic participation and how um, uh, people can participate in their government. Um, and again, you can see the process is the same, but it's just a lot more scaffolding for, for this younger set. All right, I'm gonna close this out. I think I have, uh, I'm gonna just show you very, very quickly one other activity for the younger set. So again, going to activities, and I'm gonna filter here. My activity type is analyzing documents. And um, if I look, for instance, at lower elementary, uh, these are gonna be mostly photograph based um, because we uh, might be talking about students who are um, not readers yet or beginning readers. If we see the student activity here, again, these questions are slightly different because this is about a photograph, but the process is always the same. Need it, observe the parts, make sense of it, use it as historical evidence. Uh, and in this case, um, you, you would want to walk through this together um, because of the reading. Um, but when you're done, uh, students are, are, have done all that scaffolding and they can answer, you know, what do you think Sally Ride's job was uh, based on everything they see? So this um, primary source analysis looks quite different for your first graders than it does for your uh, 12th graders or college students. But uh, absolutely, this is still the process of primary source analysis. And they can do it even at this young age by um, picking apart clues um, with, with that scaffolding provided. So you can really use, I'm gonna close this activity, you can really uh, go, use this process of document analysis with any uh, primary source document that you find on Docs Teach. And if I go to menu here, I just wanna show you in this resources section, we can click document analysis and here's our page uh, talking about how to do document analysis with students. It includes this progression and, and about how to use it. Um, we, what we really hope is students do this enough that they internalize the process and don't need to eventually, you know, maybe to the end of the year, don't need to go through these types of activities anymore. Um, but we have another resource here and we have a whole set of PDFs. So there's a whole set for younger uh, or um, novice students or those learning English. Um, I should, um, mentioned too that the online activities that I showed you, um, I showed you some a set of questions for, for uh, secondary students, a set of questions for uh, primary grade students, um, but we also have uh, questions available for ELL students. So they might be more similar to those primary grades uh, questions with a simpler language, but don't have the cute images so that um, it doesn't seem too um, juvenile for them. Um, but so here we've got these, uh, uh, PDF versions of these sheets. So for instance, for the younger students, we've got a photograph analysis sheet. Um, same progression, same questions, but a, a different format here. So if you're um, using a platform like Seesaw or Google Classroom where you can uh, provide this to students and you actually want them to annotate um, with their you know, finger or stylus or, or whatever they're using, as opposed to typing, 
uh, in the other type of activity, you could do that. So we've got a photograph. I'll just show you a couple examples, a map uh, analysis for the younger students, et cetera. So all those uh, PDF documents are available there to you know, print or share electronically. And then we've got them for the secondary students as well. So um, for instance, artifact, again, same progression, um, questions are written at a different level and uh, the presentation style is different, but we've got these PDF uh, sheets for every uh, type of primary source here, political cartoons, for example. All right, and I think I have just a, uh, a very, uh, I'm gonna very, very quickly um, show you one last thing. And if I do a document search, I mentioned you can really do this with any document you find. So um, let's say I find, um, I'm looking for um, a World War I poster. I'm gonna search for Liberty Bond and document type. I'm gonna go to a poster. So I'm looking for a World War I propaganda poster. And I can click on this. Um, I'm logged into my account right now. If I wanted to create one of those analyzing documents activities, it's really pretty quick to do so. I just click on this plus sign, create a new activity and put documents in it and add it. So it did create the activity. I just have to go to menu, my account and my activities. And you can see this activity I created is right here. I'm just gonna click to edit it. And what I can do is um, choose activity type. I want it to be analyzing documents. I'll just call this example. You could give it a different title for students or teachers, and I'm gonna save it, and that's gonna turn it into an analyzing documents activity type. And um, you'll be able to see that the uh, poster it, that I added to this activity, uh, when I click on the elements tab, there's my poster. I will set it up. And um, what I just wanna show you really quickly is how you can set up those different analysis questions for your different uh, primary source type, uh, in this case poster, or for the, for the, the grade level of your students. So um, just uh, setting this up quickly, choosing, choosing to use this full poster in my activity. And then we'll get to the next step, which is uh, choosing the questions. So here's my poster. If I click on analysis questions here, I can click on the level and you can see I can choose for younger students, for my ELL students, or my intermediate or secondary students, and I can choose my document type. Any of these artifact, cartoon, map, poster, photo, uh, sound, video, written document, etc. I'm gonna choose poster here and click save. And then it's gonna automatically populate my activity with, um, with these questions. And here they are. Um, I, you can also, there's check boxes here and down at the very bottom, you would be able to you know, remove some questions or hide them if you want to, if you didn't want all of these questions in your activity. You also have a place here where you could type in your own um, custom question and add it to your activity. Um, you could add your own questions, you could remove other questions, um, so you can really customize the questions you want. But the same progression is here, you'll notice, meet the poster, observe its parts, make sense of it, and use it as evidence. Um, so, just gonna quickly uh, skip, there's a lot of, uh, not a lot, there's a couple of other steps that you need to do to um, get this ready. So, for students, for instance, you would write your instructions and your conclusion text, and on the teacher's tab, you, you will choose an era and thinking skill and grade level. But just to, to sidestep those for a minute, we'll just go to preview this student activity. And here it is, here's the, the document I picked with all of these questions here. So it's really um, a very quick process to, to go ahead and create one of these analyzing documents types of activities uh, yourself. Um, all right, so that's, that's uh, how you can analyze documents on Docs Teach, sort of in a in a quick nutshell, um, and we that kind of wraps up our our Docs Teach for virtual learning series. Thank you all for joining us. Um, if you go to menu, resources, and look down here at webinars, um, our recordings you can find the recordings there of all of our past webinars um, and. Uh, Please, please make use of that resource and, and best of luck this school year. 